Hello, and welcome to Fairway Media's coverage of the 49th Annual Doug Newland Memorial Washington State Championships, powered by Innova. This is the longest running disc golf tournament in the world. Hi, this is Matt Van Dusen as the tournament director shown on your screen. This tournament is sponsored by Innova. I am Max Spears, and I am joined by my good pal, Trevor Lofton. Yeah, we got round three, the back nine of round three. Hopefully you guys caught us on the front nine. We'll be seeing Colin Bryant, Axel Olsen, Carter Ahrens, and Dallas Garber on the card. All of the young guns in the Pacific Northwest. This is going to be an exciting final nine. Colin's got a big lead, but we'll see if anyone has a chance to catch him here. Yeah, we'll see if he plays a little bit conservative and if the other players can get aggressive and try and get some strokes on him, which could happen here on a very eagleable hole 10, par 4, 526 feet. There are trees on the fairway, but they don't really come into play. You can throw whatever is your best distance shot. Roller, big flex, turnover, forehand, whatever you got that goes far, throw it on the side. All of these guys have the distance to get it there. Yeah, if you watched our uh, last round video here with Fairway Media's coverage, you would see Carter parking the hole. Going long. Yeah, really, he'll, he'll look to do that. All these players have the distance to do it. Looks like Dallas just not getting all the way over on it. Still a good shot. Yeah, that's going to be a fairly easy up and down. Here we've got Colin. He's trying to go big distance. Hmm, just gets a little bit too much on it. Yeah, it was like Similar halfway. Similar to last round. Yeah, halfway between a roller and a distant shot, but really didn't end up being either one. Maybe it slipped out of Axel's hands there. I'm sure that he wasn't trying to go that low. Yeah, very low release from him. Carter is our closest competitor to the leader. If he could recreate what he did last round, he could pick up a stroke and really make this a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I think this is his war bird. See his brother and his grandma? Looks like he got a great turn on the disc. Looking very similar to last round. Unfortunately catches that last tree. That probably would have gone well past the basket if it didn't hit that tree. <laughs> yeah, that had plenty of distance to get there. Still going to be a nice putt for him. For Looks like someone walking with the card calls that robbery. <laughs> probably would have a chance to go in, but still, like Max says, has a chance for the eagle. Axel's going to look to convert a nice birdie here. He can't afford to lose any strokes. Nicely done. That's a little bit early from Colin. A little high from Colin. Uh, it looks like it fades out a little bit too early from that upshot and probably left it a little bit too high not what he wanted it's gonna be a tough birdie save from where he is Dallas parks it all right Carter just outside the circle probably like 45 it's a good chance for Eagle Again, this is not a tough, easy, not a easy hole to eagle. Easy hole to birdie, but he definitely has the power for it. But it would be a great conversion here. Yeah, that's really that. impressive to go four under on this hole. That's a huge conversion to stay consistent with Colin. Only chance that he has is to start eagling holes to catch up to Colin. Not many holes left on this back nine. Yeah, and Colin's got a tricky one here for his birdie. He could be giving up two strokes to Carter. And 
he does miss. So that's going to be a par for Colin and an eagle for Carter. Axel for the birdie cleanup. Axel needs this. He'll pick up a stroke on Colin as well, but still drop one to Carter. Yep. Nice putt. Yeah, so Carter getting two eagles. Both rounds we played the rhododendron course. That's an amazing eagle for him both rounds. I think he was the only one to get an eagle, especially on both rounds, getting a lot of strokes on the field. Yeah, he was the only eagle on the day on the whole course. And he helped contribute to making hole 10 the easiest hole for the day. Hole 11, par 3, 381 foot shot. Again, this is going to be a backhand shot that you want to throw on Annie that flexes the entire way. Off the tee, there is no straight shot. You have to throw something that starts left to right and finishes right to left. If you could throw a forehand that goes 500 feet, you can, but almost nobody in the world can do that, so most players are going to try this backhand and flex. Carter does it brilliantly. Gives himself a great chance at birdie. Yeah, he looks to have gotten about pin high. This isn't a musket by any means, but it's a pretty simple hole. You're frustrated with yourself if you don't execute because you can just look out and see exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah, there's only that one tree on the right that you want to miss. Unfortunately, Dallas it doesn't even hit that one. You really want to go over that dead bush, fading or turning to the right before you fade to the left. Dallas is just going to hope for a par. See if Axel can keep it going here. That looks like a great shot from Axel. Yeah. That's exactly what you want to do. Oh, Hits the pole. Let's go. Rolls to maybe somewhere else in the circle one, but everyone is stoked to see that great shot from Axel. Yeah, I love the way he started that shot off left and let it draw itself over to the right. Come back, get the straight skip. A little bit higher from Colin, but still understable enough to do exactly what you want. Yeah, perfect. Almost an exact replica of Axel's shot. A little bit shorter, but still should be a pretty simple birdie for him. Jump putt from Dallas there. Not many people can jump 120-something feet. No, that is a very impressive jump putt from him. I envy that. Yeah, he gets so much spin <laughs> shooting it off of his hip. It's crazy. I don't know how they do that. Great birdie from Colin. Just solidifying the lead. Not letting anybody in. Yeah, that's a nice get back from him. A couple of pars in a row up to that point. Gets back on the birdie train. He's going to look to stack a few here and see if he can put this one out of reach. Axel needs to make this to avoid falling too far off the pace. It's already six back. Very nice. He'll momentarily be only five back. We've got Carter. He can get within three of the lead with a conversion here. Stop, Carter. Mm. Great putt from Carter. A good pace on this putt. You know these end of a disc catcher is going to catch those. Dallas just cleaning up his par. Not a good feeling after everybody else gets to their birdie, but this is not a gimme. Everyone else did a great shot. No, it requires a full shot. Yeah, although it's simple, it still can be difficult to get Here we've got hole 12, par 3, 
423 feet, you're gonna look to make this initial gap and have your disc move from left to right. Not really turned over, but just a little bit drifting. Uh, you have this other tree right in front of the basket that you need to avoid. The slope is slightly downhill, um, so it does not play quite that long, but um, yeah, pretty straightforward shot. Similar shape to the last hole, but much lower ceiling. Tardik puts a good move on his disc. Ooh, I think that that tree right there in front of the basket's maybe 35 feet away, so he's probably circle two edge, circle one edge. Gonna have a good chance at birdie. Yeah, I feel like this rhododendron course really wants you to throw this type of shape a lot, where it moves just slightly from left to right and then hyzers back at the end. Um, Carter did pretty well, like you said, getting to circle's edge. Axel a little too much turn. We'll see what Colin can do here. Puts a great move, great Annie on it. In front of the tree, but still skips to the basket. That's a great move by Colin there. Probably 20 something feet. Yeah, that's a nice shot. You want to go before or just behind the tree that he missed. Either side is great. Yeah, anything up to the level grass where the basket is, it's really a pretty nice shot. You have a nice well-defined green. You don't have to park everything, you just want your opportunities. Yeah, Dallas, go. Dallas looks like he just shot, perfects man. the shot. Might even be in. Skips perfectly to the basket. That's exactly what you want to do. Everyone's jealous of Dallas. Great shot. <laughs> yeah, that's how you draw it up in your mind. I got it on video. Best outfit. Best shot off the tee for this hole at least. Yeah. He's strutting down to his disc. Axel's the furthest away. Somewhere in circle two. Can definitely make it. Can he convert? No. Not enough swing on the putt there. Got the height pretty good. It was but... a good bid. Kept it high enough, but it's all you can ask for really from somewhere in 50 feet range. Yeah. I think it looks like Carter is in the circle. He hasn't missed many of these this round. Pretty automatic. Wouldn't expect him to miss this. Right on the pole. Nice birdie. I'm sure he's wishing that his closest competitor wasn't closer than he is, but we'll have to see what Colin's able to do here if he can stretch his lead back to three strokes. Yeah, pretty important putt for Colin here. Carter's really coming back. Colin does convert. Great putt. That really was important to keep that stroke advantage, the three three stroke advantage over Carter to make sure that he stays ahead. Not many holes left on the tournament. Yeah, three's really Huge important. Putt. If he can get through the next couple of holes with a three stroke lead, he puts himself in excellent position to just walk this one in for a state championship. Wow. Great putt from Dallas. Yeah, nice putt from Dallas. Climbs himself up to 22 under par. And there we get a par cleanup from Axel. Hole 13 on the rhododendron course. We have a 350 foot shot. You want to throw something of a stable fairway driver that starts straight, maybe even pans to the right. There is an extremely low ceiling that we're about to fly under right here that you want to be skipping at this point towards the basket. If you throw it too high, you're going to be catching the branches and be landing at 50 to 60 feet. So you want to throw something low. We got some chase card action here. This is John Babb, Oklahoma native. Looks like he doesn't have a great shot, but it's going to give him a great chance for a putt. Not sure what hole that was. Not the one that we're on. Uh, we got Carter. Probably going uh, Warbird. 
Maybe a Mad Cat. Hey, one of those red Lone Star discs. Looks like he didn't lean it out right enough, but still skipping under the branches. That's going to give him a good putt, maybe 30 feet. Yeah, a little awkward with some branches to contend with in there, but uh, shouldn't be too far from the basket. See if Colin can keep it going here. Birdie on this hole would give him a nice little turkey. A little too high, but he got the flip. If he misses that tree like he does, although he's in the tree that's still gonna be a good putt for him well inside the circle maybe 25 feet yeah he'll be dealing with similar obstacles um to the first shot that we saw in this hole but not too bad that's the line that's exactly what you know, what you want to do from dallas just have it throw it to the right have it skip back to the left great shot from dallas that's the perfect nice shot Staring down the camera. He knows it was a great shot. On the rhododendron course. Yeah, Dallas is really starting to feel himself here. He's getting some birdies stacked up. Playing nice on this back nine. Same with Axel. Ooh, not high enough, but had the line. Still going to have a putt. Yeah. And he must be fairly close. Carter's furthest out. This has got to be somewhere around 30 feet. Really stretching out. Using all of his muscles. No. Oh, just catches the shrubs. Must have been a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough break. We've got Axel for birdie. Airball right. We'll leave him about 15 feet on the comeback. Colin could shut the door with his butt. Yeah, our leader. And he does. High in the chains. That's basically for the win. Because four strokes up here with five to play. There are some tricky holes left, but that is a commanding lead. What do you think our other competitors are thinking at this point? They got no chance. After Colin makes that putt, even Carter, one of the better players in the state, that's going to be a hard chance to come back from Colin, how well he's playing right now, how well he's putting. Yeah, Carter is a really competitive player. I'm guessing that he's going to stay in this mentally the whole way to the end. We'll see if uh, maybe he can get a little aggressive and help push our leader. Axel looks like he has some branches in the way, but cleans up. Easy par for him. Yeah, he doesn't like it. Uh, that's definitely trickier than you want for par. Colin sizes it up. Everybody's kind of having a look at the gap that he made. Carter disappointed to lose a stroke there, I'm sure. Still a lot of golf left. <clears throat> so here we got hole 14. Par 3, 259 feet. We're going to see a couple of different pathways here, but the drone on your left side of your screen that travels to the right side of the fairway, I think that's going to be your favorite gap. Most of our players are going to throw an overstable mid-range, Gator, Justice, Cayman, something in that variety, maybe even a Firebird, uh, thrown softly, just to try to skip up to the basket, take an easy birdie and walk away. Colin does it perfectly. Yeah. Good shot. Good shot. Not even nervous, even with the four stroke lead, just parks it. Yeah, that's very nicely done by him. Puts the pressure on all of his competitors here. Yeah, that's perfect. I like Dallas's line. Nice skip. Even better. Yeah, Dallas is on a little bit of a heater here. Yeah. yeah, coming back, clawing back. Yeah, if he can make this one, that'll be five of the last six holes that he's birdied. Extreme hyzer angle there from Carter. Going to come up a little bit shorter than the others. Still a great shot. 
Looks like he was going probably fairway driver rather than mid-range. Versus the first two on the card. Axel's probably going to go mid-range, similar to Colin. Probably the same disc, whatever they threw. Some kind of stable trilogy disc. One of those ones. Great shot, four feet away. Axel's not straight. I think Axel maybe wanted a little more of an ace run there. Yeah, this rhododendron, rhod rhododendron course really gives you a lot of chances at ace. You want to get the uh, ace runs when you can. Well, I'm sure Axel's looking at scores. Oh. Nice conversion there by Carter. I'm sure Axel's looking at scores and knows where he's at and knows that if he wants to make anything happen, he's got to have some magic or some kind of spark here. Yeah, everyone else is well within eight feet. One of the easiest holes in the course. Not surprising that the lead card is going to star frame this one. Yeah, I'm surprised that this comes in at only the fifth easiest hole, averaging uh, at 2.62 with a birdie percentage of 49%. Uh, so just under half of our players taking birdies. Looks like there were a few bogeys and double bogeys on that hole as well. Yeah, tricky if you hit the early branches. This is hole 15, par 3, 320 foot shot. This flight that the drone is taking is what most of the players are going to take. It's the left side of that middle tree. You either throw a forehand that starts flat, fades to the basket at the end, and you kind of throw a flip up, hyzer flip shot that will fade to the basket after hyzer flipping. There is that gap on the right that's much smaller, but many or some players may take it. I don't think any of these players will. Colin's going to be taking that left side gap with an, uh, a flex ante forehand. Very good idea. See how he does. Looks like he hits the gap. A little bit too much ante on it, but good roll. Probably circle's edge. Yeah, very friendly on the roll there. Going to give him a nice opportunity for another birdie. Here we've got Dallas. Dallas trying to go that flip up side on the left side of the tree. Gets a great flip up, great shot. Looks like a fairway driver, maybe a six speed, parks the hole. Perfect shot. Yeah, that was really nicely done. Carter is gonna hit early on the left side. That's gonna be looking at a par. Yeah, that's the one mistake you can make while taking that left side, starting that hyzer flip too early on the left. It looks like Axel's trying the same, just not trying to hit that left side. He's got a putter in hand. He has the power. It's just, does he have the angle? He does not. Yeah, fortunate to avoid the tree that Carter hit. These guys are going to have very difficult birdies. you got to think Carter's going to try to run this. Uh, he's got some family with him. I'm sure people are looking at scores. He knows that he needs all the birdies he can get. Really a pretty nice line, but so difficult to try to penetrate past those branches. Axel lining up a hyzer putt here. Oh! Nearly oh, oh, oh. a spike hyzer putt. Giving it a great bid. This is a tough basket to approach. There's not many lanes that you can have outside of these trees that you can have a putt on. Unfortunately for Colin, he does have one of the few lanes that you can putt on, even if you are 30 feet away. Unfortunately, misses the basket. But fortunately, on the rooted end of the course, there is a basket or a tree right behind the basket that he catches. Lands right behind the basket. Easy tap in for par. Yeah, this green can kind of give you something or take it away. You can get a weird, awkward lie. You can get a little bit of love on a backstop like he did. Nice putt there for par from Carter. Yeah, there's not many greens like this on the rhododendron course. Uh, but I do like when they're able on these open courses to incorporate some trees on the green. Yeah, definitely in a grove of trees. Great, 
basket placement. Bunch of pars all around. All of them will be moving on to the tough hole 16 island hole. Hole 16, part 3, 309 feet, island hole, as Trevor said. We're going to come up upon some flags here you just saw in the drone flight. That marks the end of the inbounds area. Everything in between that and this island that you see is hazard. Uh, so you have to play your disc where it lies with a stroke penalty. The inside of this ridge on the island shaped green is the inbounds line. So you have to clear the whole way over that ridge to be out of the hazard. Players are going to look to throw a very straight shot and not carry too far. This is in danger of going OB long, and it does. Here we've got Colin. He's going to look to control the speed <clears throat> a little bit better than Dallas. That's beautifully done. Pretty simple putt from there. Carter needs this. He's going champion penny putter. Catching some branches, but still a great shot. Basically parks it, making it look extremely easy, way easier than it actually is. This is a very tough hole. Yeah, the gap is pretty small. It looks open when you're looking at it from the green, but the way these branches hang... If you do not peer this gap, you will be finding yourself in the hazard. The ideal shot is an extremely low penetrating hyzer flip putter. That's not a very a common shot that many people take. Extremely shot or extremely difficult shot to actually execute. So Dallas coming Ooh, out of the hazard here. Save. Yeah, very nice. It's always a little annoying when it's hazard and not OB and you have to 20 feet away but still a par putt yeah take that extra distance all right this could be a statement putt for Colin if he can make it oh that is unfortunate wow I'm sure he thought that was in Axel might get a stroke on Carter and Colin probably not Carter yeah at this point we have a little bit of a um, battle brewing between Axel and Dallas. Um, this also did come in as our hardest hole on the course with only 18% birdies, mm. um, averaging yeah. 0.41 strokes over par, 44% bogeys, and 8% doubles. Yeah, so the lead card does great here. We have two birdies and two pars well above the average score. Par is not bad. I'm sure Colin's not stoked on it, but it's still a great score. Hole 17, par 3, 370 foot shot. You want to take a fast moving frisbee that moves past the trees that were flying past, skips past all of these. The branches are extremely low, so you want to throw something low and skips under those. It's a low ceiling. There's also a mando on the left side that you need to go to the right of. Some people take an inside line that you throw an hyzer and flips to flat, or you take an overstable disc that stays flat and skips left hard. Carter parked it last round with an overstable disc. He's probably trying to do the same, but probably too high on this round and catches a tree yeah this is an interesting hole there's not a lot of separation on it very few birdies very few bogeys there is the mandatory on the left side i wonder if they should extremely make... early release from axel yeah he's lucky to not have missed the mando yeah i wonder if they should add a second mandatory here and force you to throw down the tunnel just to make this shot a little more interesting This looks like a great shot. Going too straight, never had a chance to fade. Something like a Dallas Garber disc. Out on the rhododendron course, that was a great shot from Dallas, but not hyzering enough. We got Colin, looks like he throws, that looks like a great shot if that keeps skipping through the trees. That's the best shot on the card. Great shot from Colin, gonna have a shot for birdie. Yeah, that was excellently done. It's always nice to putt last 
when you have a lead, you can see what everyone else has done. Might even be able to lay that one up. Looks like Axel was just trying to lay up. <coughs> Dallas knows he needs to make this to beat Axel. Only one hole left after this. Hole 18. Most people get a three on it. This might be his only chance to secure third place. Gets it turned over, up in the air. Oh, great bid. Really good effort from that distance. He's got a lot of speed on that putt coming off his hip. Yeah, great flow on the hair, but the hat taken off, maybe not enough. Yeah, what do you think about this hole, Trevor? I think it's just, <clears throat> it's a little kind of in between. It seems like it needs one tweak to make it more interesting. Yeah, very tough. Not many people are getting the birdie. It's definitely an extremely bonus birdie. You have to throw a perfect shot, better than perfect shot, to even get near the basket. Colin threw the perfect shot, and he's still at circle's edge. So it's a very tough hole. He could have put the tournament away. Even though it's already pretty much put away, it's a good bid from him. This is a meaningful putt here. He needs this to have his shot to secure third. It's a good, confident putt for par from Dallas. Yeah, really nice par for him. We've got Axel to keep pace. Which he does. All right, so going into hole 18, we've got Colin Bryant with a three-stroke lead. Carter in second, three strokes behind him, and then a tie for third, three strokes behind Carter at 25 under par. Uh, really, most of our action here is on the battle for third place. As long as Colin's able to put some shots in play, he looks to be able to clean this up. Yeah, the hole, it does have multiple hazard penalty areas. There are three bunkers in the vicinity of the basket, as well as an OB line left and long of the basket. So it's not put away. The tournament is not over. Colin can make mistakes. He does have to throw a good tee shot and a good up shot to make sure that he does uh, finish on top of everybody else. We've seen a little bit of nerves. The last two putts have missed short. That's typically a sign of somebody feeling the pressure of a possible state championship. He knows Carter's going to be pressing. He can see the scores right here in front of him. John Babb is in the clubhouse with the hot ground, negative 11, has moved up uh, the leaderboard quite a bit. And you know Carter's going to be pressing here, trying to possibly even get an eagle if he can. Carter going the roller. Puts a great angle on it. Went to the right of that tree that we can see. We can't really see where he finished, but he's probably well up there near the basket, probably right side of the basket. Yeah, that looked like a huge roller. It certainly had the speed to get to pin high if the angle was as it needed to be. Oh, Axel's yeah. going air shot, cutting down some branches. Oh. Still a great shot. Maybe 200, 170 feet up shot from there. Yeah, I like to get as far to that left side as possible. It's so much more open from over there. It really gives you a much easier approach. Yeah, the middle gaps have some branches that touch the ground, so there's not much of a gap. The only way you can hit there is throw the roller, which many of these players are. Nice, Dallas is going the air shot. That is a great shot. Pumps it far down the fairway. Yeah, that is very difficult. He has to throw that on a rope, under branches, above a hill. Yeah. Really well done. Colin's probably going to take the safest route, which is that hyzer line on the right. Just get as far as you can. Not going to get a birdie, but... Just going to get as far as he can. Good as a tree, but that's fine. His footwork looked normal and good. His pace was normal and good. All he needs here is a bar. Mm. 
Lay up again from there. Oh, Great shot from Colin. Well away from the OB hazard. That's going to be like a 60 foot up shot just to lay up for an easy party. You got to think Axel's going to try to make this. Tied with Dallas. Dallas had a great shot as well. Both of them vying for third place. Ooh. Oh. Into the hazard bunker. Did look like he was trying to play it safe to secure third, but just a little too much pace. All Dallas has to do is lay up and get the birdie for third. Yeah, Dallas just has that putt. Secure third place. Here we've got Carter. Carter looks to be giving this a bid. Get up. Colin just easily laying up. He knows he's well ahead of Carter. Many strokes to play with. Congratulations to Colin there, knowing that he's going to have that Washington State Championship. Shouts to the TD, Matt Van Dusen, who just popped on the screen there. We're in a great event. He runs this in the Washington State Doubles Championships. Both are a lot of fun. Wow. Carter with the unfortunate roll into the hazard. That's going to push him towards a bogey on this hole. That's actually bringing Axel and Dallas into second place. So Carter's going to be putting for bogey. If he misses that, that'll be double bogey and bring Axel and Dallas into play because they are both putting for birdie, I believe. That's true. Dallas cleans up a <coughs> birdie to go to 26. Axel, remember, is also in the hazard, so Axel oh, is out of contention yeah. for second or third. All right. So Carter cleans up, maintains his second place finish. Axel here can make this to secure solo fourth place just off the podium. One ahead of John Babb, who shot the shot hot round of negative 11. And here he is, your 2023 Washington State champion in the MPO division, Colin Bryant. What a season. State champion, PAC-X champion. Really impressive for the youngster. Yeah, great to see Colin play uh, extremely well in this Carter. tournament. Fun to watch him play. Playing very well this year. Yeah, he win for the Washington State Championships, the longest running tournament in the world. Yeah, it's impressive to see these young kids at such a you know long-standing tournament doing so well, shredding on these new courses. Washington Disc Golf is in good hands for a lot of years to come, and we're thankful we've got this awesome fairway media coverage to bring it to us. Yeah, smash the like button if you like this, guys. Hit the subscribe button. You're gonna love it. We got many more rounds to come. Hit the like button, guys. Come on. Yeah, and don't I'll forget to guys. visit fairwaymedia.golf. You can get discs, you can get minis, you can get all sorts of goodies there to help support Fairway Media. Add to your collection, add to your bag. Come check it out. And like Trevor said, make sure to like and subscribe. I know you guys haven't subscribed yet, so hit the subscribe button. Come on, you do it. Put those notifications on just for good measure. Move that mask down a little bit. Hit the button. Our awesome tournament director, Matt Van Dusen. And I am Max Spears, here with my good buddy Trevor Lofton, signing off. Um, hit us up at uh, fairwaymedia.golf. Hi! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs>